Hi, my name is Karen Boniker, painter, master, and I'd like to introduce you to a new brush pack called Sunset Aglow for Painter Essentials. And in this tutorial, we're going to be painting a lovely sunset landscape uh, using this new brush pack. So let's get started. Let's take a, f a look at the size of the canvas first that I've created here, and we'll go to Canvas and Resize. And this one is 2408 by 1800. And you can set this resolution at either 150 PPI or 250. If you plan on printing, then of course you want to go all the way up to 300. But at this time, if we're just going to be practicing with those brushes and doing a quick painting, 150 is probably a good choice for you here. Select OK. And let's go ahead and get started. The first brush we're going to choose is called the Bristly Brush. And we're going to begin by creating that area of light in our painting, which we want to maintain and keep revealed throughout the entire painting process. I'm going to uh, begin by working with a rather large brush. So holding down Control-Alt, I can drag out the size of my brush and get a nice big brush size here. We're going to be using our little color wheel here, and we're going to be using a color that is probably more on the gold yellow side. So we'll take that right about here. And towards the center of our painting, we're just going to paint some nice bright brush strokes. And uh, you can vary your pressure here. So very light pressure, and you'll get a nice soft feathery edge here. Don't worry about where that area of light goes, but try and maintain this center area here where we're going to be where we're going to be maintaining that uh, area of light. It's going to help to create that depth and dimension in the painting as well. So even if you bring those brush strokes down a little bit further to where you uh, may want to apply your horizon line, that's perfectly fine. The next brush, um, we're going to stay with this brush, but we're going to start working with some other colors here. So we're going to go into more of the violet shades and um, begin by very softly doing some overlapping of color towards the top here. And very soft pressure here as you go over the tops of those brush strokes, but maintain that nice bright area uh, in the center there. And I'll go a little bit darker up in these edges here. And we do this because it helps to create depth in our painting and gives volume and form to our clouds when we start forming those as well. Very soft pressure as you go over some of the bright gold yellow areas. Firmer pressure and you'll get more saturation of color and just very softly going over some of those areas. Now I'm going to pick up a very bright red here and we're going to put a little bit of that right in this area here and again very soft pressure. Bright red goes a long way so you don't have to overdo it. And we'll just create something like that. We'll use our Alt key to sample color now that we've got some good color going for us. And just by simply choosing that Alt key, you can sample color throughout your painting. Very soft pressure, remember, on this brush for very faint, almost pastel look. The next brush we'll use is the Glow Blender, and we'll have a lot of fun with this by actually using it to create the shapes of clouds within the sky based upon the brush work that we've already done with the Bristly Brush. So this brush you can create some nice texture effects and start to almost build the look of clouds here and there with nice circular motions. And you, of course, you can vary the size of this brush or use it to do an overall blending, nice 
big brush and we'll use that just to feather out our edges and soften our sunset here. And do feel free to just pull that color right down into the lower parts of the painting. There's no problem with that. We'll be going over these areas and a lot of times this actually helps to enhance the painting even further. Remember to try and retain that beautiful area of light. Notice how I'm going into some of this brushwork here and creating a little circular motion, creating that effect of maybe some distant and clouds that we can actually use to build on these shapes that we're developing here. The next brush we're using is distant clouds and we're going to actually sample colors that we've already applied based upon our blending and already worked into the brush, into the painting. And you can see that I'm building some nice big look of some thunderheads in the background. And you'll notice that I continue to sample the colors around. And we'll use this just as a brush to develop the look of maybe real distant clouds in the back. The next brush we're going to use is called Sunset Clouds. And for that, we'll go to a lighter value here, and we'll use that to start building up our clouds right in the foreground area here. And this is a beautiful, beautiful um, cloud brush to use. Um, remember that uh, if you use it with firm pressure, you'll get a very saturated brush stroke. And then soft pressure you'll notice you get a nice blending quality. So it's very good for creating that volume that you need when you're painting clouds. And it's important when you're painting clouds to show lots of different value changes as you build upon your clouds. This gives them, you know, lovely shape, form, very soft pressure and you'll get that nice blending effect. And this is not one area that um, I can spend lots of time with uh, painting clouds. It's one of my favorite, favorite things to do. So you can see how you can build on those different levels of form within the clouds by using different value changes within the cloud. We'll put a nice big one over here and let it go right off the top of the canvas. And we'll soften the edges on this one. Nice large brush but very soft pressure. We'll keep our edges soft and that way it'll draw more attention to the focal area. And we'll maintain that area of light. Use this brush with a very small brush tip size and then of course work with it in white when you want to go in to do a little more form and shape of your clouds. But the same would apply even with a small brush size, is that when you want to feather the edge, very soft pressure. Very soft. We're going to put our water in now and we're going to go with a nice soft color here. I'm going to bring that down to more of a purple violet shade and nice big brush and we're going to develop our horizon somewhere right about here and we'll just stroke a long stroke over and we'll just go ahead from the sides and pull in and then from this side, pull in 
and we want to maintain a nice area of light through the center here. You can darken those values a little bit at the edges, creating a very straight horizon line. Let's bring the size of this down a little bit. Is use the V key. V as in Victor. Apply it where you want to start, pull it all the way to the end, and let it go. And there you've got a nice straight horizon. Select the B key once again, and you can paint. We'll pick up the Glow Blender one more time, and from the edges, we're going to pull in and start to soften these edges out. You certainly can use one of your favorite blenders for this process as well. And what I'll do here also is I'll go back to the Sunset Lake and I'm going to pick up some of this nice yellow that we have in that area of light and I'm just going to softly bring that in to this area as well. Nice big brush. So we'll work with the Glow Blender now and just firm pressure and then go over our lake to create that nice area of light. Now let's go ahead and put in some mountains now. It's always that fun of going back into the painting and towards the end of your painting and doing some more and additional blending. Adding more clouds. Let's pick up the mountain. Let's see, we're going to use the mountain glow brush. And this one we're going to use to paint in our mountains. And we're going to go with a dark value here. So we'll go with a, a very dark purple. And we're going to start off by creating our mountain. And that's the mountain glow brush. And the easiest way to put in a mountain is just to pretty much go up and then down and up and then down and create this first pass in your mountain range. So much of creating mountains has to do with angles and the angles that you put in and of course the texture and light that you apply. Let's go ahead and put in a, a real distant kind of mountain back here. And once you have your mountains in, then you can really start to develop the shape. This brush also picks up paper texture. So it's a good one if you want to pick up um, and try a different paper texture. I have simulated wood grain selected here. So you can see that it's giving me a very highly textured brush effect. And I am not worried again about uh, where I, you know, apply that a brush stroke. It is, it's okay if it goes down into the water because we will be doing some blending there. Um, I'm going to go back and select just the plain paper here, and I'll start to just get in the shape of my mountains where I want them. And of course, deciding on the colors that I'm going to be using here. And there's nothing more fun than color. So don't be afraid to, you know, add lots of color to your painting. That's part 
of the fun of working with a painting where you're developing a real strong sunset. We'll use a darker value on this side of the mountain and this side will now become our darkest part of the darkest value of the mountain where the shadows are. So we'll keep the shadows on the left hand side of the painting. and the lighter side of the painting will have our lighter values. You can even at this point think about maybe adding um, you know the look of maybe some snow within those mountains. So maybe we'll sample this white here and pick up some texture because you want to be able to show a little bit of texture in there. Uh, worn pavement is a good one and we'll just go ahead and maybe float maybe the look of that it's not giving me exactly what I want let's go to that simulated wood grain again a little bigger brush and I think that's gonna work nicely A little bit of the look of maybe some little snow left on those mountains. Firmer pressure and you'll get a more saturated brush effect. Let's go ahead and start really digging into this and forming these mountains now. So work with your different values of color here. Put a little firmer pressure on that brush. Maybe we'll do another little mountain right here there we go and some blending um, so again, we'll go and select that Glow Blender and nice big brush here and we'll just pull up from the lake. This gives us a nice soft edge and blends those areas out a little bit. I usually like to do this down, do the blending down towards the base of the mountains. And that'll soften it and then give you um, that nice crisp edge that you often see in mountain ranges. Now another brush you can use here is the Sunset Cloud brush. But use it nice and big. Bring the opacity down on the brush and maybe sample this nice color in here and use it just to put in a little bit of a feeling of clouds or fog at the base of your mountains. And that also does a nice, uh, adds a nice effect in pushing those mountains back into the distance a little bit, softening them.
I've added a new layer here and we're starting to build our first little form, landform here. And what we'll do is just use the Sunset Lake brush and just create that look of a little bit of a land plane coming out here. Something like that. And then we're going to pick up the brush called Sunset Foliage and using that same brush, but we'll make it nice and large. We're going to use that to create the look of some foliage on this um, piece, piece of land here. And just sample color. You want this to be a little darker though in terms of your values. And use just kind of a dabbing motion. Nice dark color here. This is where um, you'll want to create lots of contrast. So use darker colors here. This works well. Especially at the edges. This dark against light contrast creates drama in your painting and really adds interest. We'll um, choose the Glow Blender here and a little bit smaller brush and we're just going to take that right along the edges. First of all we're going to drop that layer though because we want to be able to take advantage of the blending that occurs on the canvas layer. So you'll notice that I'm creating some shadows here, some cast shadows, and just pulling directly right off the edge. And once my shadows are in, then I'll go the opposite direction and very soft pressure and just blend that a little bit. I'm going to need to use the brush called Trunks and a nice dark color here. And we're going to actually put in a couple of trees on this land source. And we'll do something like that. And then the brush we're going to use is called the Sunset Fir Tree. And of course, we can work with, um, I like start, starting with a darker value of green. Um, and then from that point, um, I will develop my highlights. So this brush is lots of fun to play with. It, um, it creates the look of little fir trees, very, very feathery edges, very soft. And it's a good start. And then once you get the feathery part of the brush of the tree in, then I'll show you the next step that you'll want to finish this fir tree off with. And this brush really works nicely by just simple little back and forth brush strokes. It really paints the tree for you almost. So again, use those darker values and just work through the tree until you get the basic structure in. Nice dark values because that gives you the opportunity to work with lighter values for your highlights. To finish the trees, you'll want to use the brush Impressionist Sunset. Once you've laid in your dark values with a fir tree brush, then you'll want to go to your highlights and when you think about a beautiful sunset like this, and this is why it's a good idea to start with those really dark values uh, at first, use this brush to add the highlights and fill in your fir trees. But again, that good strong contrast will go a long way to creating drama and that dramatic sunset effect. And then finally, um, I would use the sunset foliage again to add color and interest to this foreground area here. Uh, use 
lighter colors and then sample color as well as you go through this. Because sometimes the areas will get a little bit too saturated, too, too much over the top, and you'll want to tone those down. But anywhere where you're going to have lots of reflection, that's where you want to have some fun with color. And you'll see that I'm sampling color constantly. You can go back to your trunks brush, and here you can add uh, some nice, uh, maybe effects of little trunks, tree trunks coming up. Sample this white and use it just along the edge. A little reflective quality. And then I would go on to um, actually add another landform on the right hand side of the painting where again you would repeat this process and we would go ahead and use the Sunset Lake. Dark, dark value. And again, we would put in another landform here. Build in that land landform using the Sunset Foliage brush. Again, start with those darkest values. Do a little overlapping on the edges to show contrast. And here I'm using a very dark value and we're just using the Impressionist Sunset brush and we're using that to create our tree. And again, darkest value first. Just work down and build the form and shape of the tree. If you want to just do a visual of where you want the trunk of the tree to be. That's fine, just so it keeps you on track. And really just a kind of a back and forth motion, making sure that you get lots of variance in the shape of the tree, the form of the tree, and, the, and as you continue to put in the values. The greens and the dark greens and some of the yellow. Pull that in. Show those beautiful little reflections up on the tips of the fir tree. And then you can also go in with the Sunset Fir Tree and use that to create a little more detail where you might want it. Always overlapping those shapes in, and value. Light against dark and dark against light. I would finish up by choosing the Sunset Foliage brush again and just pull in some nice colors here. Maybe pick up even some of that orange and sample and go back over it just to mute it down a bit. You don't want to call too much attention to certain parts of the painting. could always put in another tree here. Um, I'm thinking that this one, if it were Bob, he would be putting some flowers in. So maybe you can use the Impressionist Sunset and put in the look of a few little wildflowers here and there. 
nice red up here. And then at, use your trunks brush again, nice dark value here to create some looks again of some trunks and old dead tree trunks coming up for some added texture. Um, I also would finish probably with a bristly brush and use that if you want to enhance. Let's go back to bristly brush here. Nice small brush if you wanted to enhance the trunk of the tree here. Pull in a darker value on this side. And, you know, even though you might think you're finished, a lot of times it's just fun to go back into the painting and, you know, continue adding more clouds. Um, one thing you could do here is pick up that nice pink and maybe do a smaller cloud formation across the center here. And this will help to add a little bit of distance and depth to the painting. And then larger brush and very soft pressure and you can fade that edge out. And this is Painter Essentials Sunset Clouds and the Sunset Aglow brush pack. Hope you enjoyed this.